Okay. Uh, I think it's time to start. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming here to join our session. I know this is the last session, and you may be tired, so really appreciate to be here. And uh, uh, today, uh, to join our session, uh, this is a deep dive harbor session. Uh, I'm Steven Zhou uh, from uh, VMware. I'm an engineer of Harbor, and uh, this session we have another speaker, Daniel. Uh, he is also an engineer from Harbor team. Okay. Uh, today, we like we would like to use this session to explore some insights of Harbor, uh, some possible potential direction of Harbor in the uh, future. Um, we uh, sincerely hope that this talk is not a one-way uh, session. We hope to get your feedbacks uh, to help us refine uh, the direction. Okay, um, a quick survey. Who knows Harbor already? Please raise your hand. Okay, pretty good. Okay, who used Harbor already? Okay, cool. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> uh, I want to mention again, yeah, Harbor has just been accepted as 19th incubator project and announced in uh, KubeCon Shanghai last month. Uh, thank you, everyone, and thanks to the Harbor community. Okay, here's the agenda of today's talk, two parts, overview and uh, exploration. Yeah, uh, right before doing exploration, I would like to revisit, uh, revisit uh, what the capability Harbor provides and uh, how does the Harbor uh, architecture look like with you guys together as the background of the second exploration part. So I, I know you may get uh, join the introduction session already, you know, uh, you may be familiar with Harbor already, uh, so don't leave. This is a quick uh, part. And uh, today's session, the main part is the uh, second uh, section two, exploration. <clears throat> okay, Harbor, yeah. Uh, open source, uh, trusted cloud native cloud, uh, uh, project. Yeah, it's open source, we are open, and uh, now uh, maintained by a global community. And uh, trust data, that's our aim to, you know, provide a uh, secure, uh, effective, and a reliable image management and uh, maybe a hypercharge management uh, for, you know, cloud native, yeah, to serve the cloud native environments. Okay, I'll quickly go through what Capability uh, Harbor uh, has. Okay, the first uh, access control, yeah. Uh, we enable uh, role-based role -based access control in Harbor, and we also support AD or RDAP integration. <clears throat> the content in Harbor is isolated by a project, and you can uh, apply the RBAC uh, to uh, restrict uh, the content accessing, okay. And another is the replication. Yeah, we can support uh, replicate your image from the source harbor to the target harbor. Uh, you can uh, set filters, you can set uh, different triggers, that means schedule immediate and uh, uh, manual. Uh, next one also, you know, <coughs> vulnerability scanning. Uh, image uh, is a software uh, package collection along with OS. There might, vulnerability, uh, there might be vulnerability as that may cause risk to your environment. So in Harbor, we leverage the open source project Claire to uh, provide uh, a vulnerability scanning capability to make sure your image is uh, secure. That means all the vulnerability you will be aware. Uh, next part is the content trust. Uh, yeah, when you're pulling image from the registry, uh, you want to make sure the image you are pulling is the one uh, published by the creator, and it's not, uh, uh, you know, it's not uh, tempered. So by how set the uh, uh, image, uh, we leverage uh, another open source project, Notary, to support the uh, content trust. When uh, the image will be sent when pushing, and uh, uh, the signature will be verified when pulling. This can be defended in a control policy. <clears throat> okay, um, next part, Harm Child support. Yeah, in addition uh, to image management, we are now, uh, 
support uh, harm chart uh, uh, measurement. That means the harbor is not only an image registry, but also a harm chart repository. Yeah, you can manage your harm chart via harbor. Okay, uh, keep the same experience with the image management. Okay, I think uh, in the second part we'll ex explore more advanced features of harm chart. Okay, high availability. Yeah. Uh, you may want to deploy HA uh, Harbor to your uh, enterprise production environment. So in next recent release, we'll uh, deliver the HA uh, deployment via her Harm chart. That means there will be a Harbor Harm chart uh, support HA uh, deployment. Um, but I want to mention that the HA database, that means HA Postgre and HA Redis is not contained in this uh, Harm chart delivery. <coughs> Okay, more features. Yeah, we have uh, you know a fancy web portal. Yeah, you can use web uh, this uh, this web portal to do to manage your content uh, content like uh, image at the uh, chart easily. And uh, batch operation is enabled in the uh, web portal. And the uh, RESTful API. Yeah, we provide a RESTful style API for integration to other platform. And the uh, Swagger API is uh. uh Provided for your reference to check the API, and uh, uh, yeah, internationalization. We support English, both uh, Chinese. I want to mention more. We have three other languages: Spanish, French, and uh, I don't want to pronounce. I, I, I don't know how to pronounce the name. The, those three languages are contributed by the community contributors. Yeah, thank thank you. Thanks, them. And uh, audit log, yeah. Uh, all the key operation will be recorded, and you can audit uh, uh, the operation in uh, in future in some case. Okay, if you need uh, the auditing, and the label, uh, you can mark label to image at the chart, and the label can label can be defined in project and the system uh, scope. This label can be used to do some filter or can be a filter source image or source harm charts in the replication scenario. Okay, we also support multiple deployment ways. Uh, you can use Docker Compose to deploy Harbor in the standalone environment, and uh, you can also use Boris to deploy Harbor to the Cloud Foundry in ecosystem platform, and also yeah, use Harm Chart Harbor Harm Chart to deploy Harbor to the Kubernetes environment. Okay. Uh, Harbor uh, architecture. So let's say uh, the component from the top to the bottom. Yeah, the top one is uh, API routing. That's uh, a third party component and NGX. It will route the API request to the core service. Yeah, core service is the, the core component of Harbor. You know, provide the API, authentication and authorization, and the web service for the UI, and uh, extended the charter service. Uh, also, the you know the also authentication yeah integration uh, the capability integration with our AD and our DAP uh, in uh, this core service and uh, next level yeah job service it will help run some uh, uh, large scale background jobs uh, submitted by the, some uh, core service and the admin service will handle the global configuration of Harbor and. Uh, then we have image registry and uh, image registry. Yeah, it's a third party component to handle store, store, uh, store and uh, retrieve image uh, as a case. And uh, charter museum, yeah, it will provide uh, uh, charter uh, indexing and uh, charter storage capability. <clears throat> we also, uh, there is a, a Claire, you can see. Yeah, the third party component, uh, component support uh, one based scanning and uh, content trust uh, with uh, notary. Okay. And uh, two, uh, uh, light, uh, two light green uh, box. One is a uh, key value storage. We use uh, Redis to keep a cache or some uh, key value uh, metadata. And we use the security database that's a post gray to uh, store some metadata of Harbor. Okay. And uh, the right side is the packaging 
a component that means a def uh, the several package ways to deploy Harbor to different target environments. And the lowest uh, layer is the storage layer. Yeah, we can deploy, uh, we can use the local or some remote storage like S3. Okay, that's the Harbor. So next part, I'd like to invite my colleague Daniel to lead the exploration part of uh, this deep dive. Thank you. Uh, hey guys, um, thanks for staying with us again. And uh, yeah, uh, since Harbor became an incubator project in CNCF, uh, we have been eagerly trying to find out uh, uh, how we can make it a better registry for uh, cloud native users. So next I will cover a few areas where we think improvements could be made and share with you a few ideas regarding uh, what can be done. Um, some of these ideas are currently still quite immature, I must say, but we wish to kick off some discussion within the community so we can work together to refine them and make some real progress. Let's get started. Um, so the first topic is DevOps and the CI/CD support. So since the early days of Docker, the registry has been playing an important role in the uh, DevOps workflow. Typically, the developer will push the code to the code repo and the CI system somehow build the images, push it to the registry. Then the other side, uh, the deployer or operator will pull the image from registry, deploy it to you know, different target environments. But in our case, many Harbor users are using it uh, in their own CI CD pipeline. So we think the issues in this area should be treated with higher priority. Um, uh, so first thing, the robot account. This is a requirement we see uh, quite a few times raised by the community users. In Harbor, an image is stored in a project. I, I know many of you uh, have been using Harbor, so you must be familiar with this. Uh, to access an image if the project is not public, you need to authenticate first. So many users uh, configure Harbor against their own corporate LDAP. And if they want to push or pull images uh, to Harbor in their pipeline, they have to uh, put the credentials of their LDAP user somewhere in their CI system. Um, they are not happy with this situation. So to solve the problem, we will introduce robot account. Um, this account is non-interactive, but for pushing or pulling the content only. So a project admin will be able to create a token, assign permission to it, and user can configure it in their CI system without worrying about uh, leaking sensitive account information. Uh, so this is quite clear and uh, we plan to provide it in the release early next year. Okay, so that's the first one. Next one is the uh, webhook. So webhook is pretty important for connecting Harbor to other components in the pipeline. Uh, I remember the other day in the uh, in introduction session, a user asked how can he know if an image is replicated from the target side. This is a typical scenario where a notification mechanism helps. Uh, ideally, Harbor should send out a notification to this endpoint when the image is replicated, and the, and the handler of this notification um, will trigger a process to deploy a pod which references this replicated image. Um, but so far, we don't have this mechanism, so we, we will need to add it. Um, so far, a user will need to pull, you know, keep calling the API to see if the image is ready. But actually, Harbor handles the notification from the internal registry uh, to trigger replication or image scan currently. Uh, so uh, now we just need to send the event out to, to the outside and uh, some event framework to match the uh, you know, handlers to the event and et cetera. Okay, so that's a webhook. And the third one is the metadata. So the idea is as a repository, it's always helpful to provide more information to the user which describes the asset it stores. Um, so far we support signature uh, vulnerabilities and uh, I think they can all be considered as metadata of the container images. So we think it would be interesting if we allow the creator of the asset um, or the image can provide richer metadata when pushing it. Um, this will provide more uh, possibilities for finer grain, finer grain policy control. For example, um, if we can include the test coverage in the metadata of an image, then we can create a policy via the open policy agent to only allow deploy the image that have, uh, you know, um, test coverage higher than say 80% to their uh, product uh, Kubernetes cluster. 
And uh, here is a proposal. Um, so welcome you guys to chime in and uh, help us refine the idea. Uh, the next one is the CLI. This is pretty straightforward. UI is preferred by the administrator, but for automation, you need scripts and CLI. Uh, a contributor from the community is working on the CLI. It's called Harbor Kato. Uh, this provides another option for automation in addition to calling the API. So it works in basic scenarios already, and he's adding more features. For more, for more details, you can also uh, refer to the proposal, and it has a checklist about uh, what features are supported already. So it's a recap. So as for the um, DevOps, these are the ideas and the items we are working on or for the better support. Generally speaking, in this area, I think the uh, focus is to enhance Harbor to make it more accessible and easier to integrate with other components in the pipeline to better fit in the workflow. And we will work on that. OK. The next topic is replication. Uh, replication is a widely used feature in Harbor. Some users use it to back up their image data to the uh, slave registry. Some users use it to distribute the image to remote Harbor instance, uh, targeting different stages and uh, environments, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that's why we kept enhancing it in the previous releases. We've added, as Stephen mentioned in the uh, earlier, uh, we've added filters, schedules to make the replication more flexible. However, there are still some limitations. First, um, the replication can only happen between Harbor instances. Second, it's only push-based. That means uh, when you configure the replication on one Harbor instance, it only supports uh, pushing image to the remote instance. Uh, but we find it a common scenario that user may use both public registries and Harbor at the same time. Uh, and there has been requirements asking us to support syncing images between Harbor and the public registries, such as Docker Hub, GCR, et cetera. Um, so uh, we made the decision to make the framework more extensible. Uh, the goal is when user creates a replication policy, he should be able to replicate the images from a remote instance. And by implementing adapters, uh, the remote instances can be any type of registry, or even better, it may be a file server if you like. Uh, currently, uh, we are working very closely with uh, cloud providers in China to implement this enhancement. And, we are, and you are welcome to join to provide support um, to more other registries. And we believe this is a significant improvement and will bring more values to users in hybrid or multi-cloud scenarios. Okay, so that's the replication. Um, next is the tenancy model. So as Harbor became more and more popular, we started to hear feedbacks from administrators of larger organizations. They have different requirements from small developer team or uh, uh, single developers. Uh, and they are mainly related, I, I mean, these requirements are mainly related to the multi-tenancy. So next I'll share with you guys some of our thinking in this area. Uh, first is the tenancy model. Uh, Hubbard has the notion called project, and it is essentially the folder of everything so far. It's a namespace of the images, so you can push images to a, push images to a project. It's also a container of people, so you can add members to a project and uh, manage the members' permission to the images by assigning different roles to them. Uh, project is also a unit of management, so the project admin can, con can add control policies such as uh, replication or vulnerability scan uh, to the project so it can control the images. Um, early users of Harbor uh, really like this simplicity, but I mean, uh, I mean the administrator of larger team um, or organization, they ask for more flexibility. Some of them want another uh, layer of isolation or finer grain control. So we think it's worth thinking about a slightly more complicated model to decouple a different perspective of a product and map different features to different entities. Uh, for example, we may introduce the org as an isolation label of a tenant, add users and team to the org, and create namespace or folders within the org or product to assign roles and policies to the namespace. But I know some, even some of 
uh, our internal team hates this idea. Uh, we are still in early uh, discussion regarding the changing the tendency model, so the plan is not finalized yet. But uh, we, we should definitely do something to you know, provide more flexibility. That's the point. Um, next item is regarding the RBAC. So we have different roles in Harbor now. Uh, at system level, there are system admins who can uh, do all the management work, like managing users, pr managing products, and uh, uh, regular users who have to be added to a product to have access to the assets. <coughs> so um, within the product, there is a guest role who can only read or pull, the developer role who can write or push, uh, and uh, the product admin role who can manage the members and uh, the policies. A uh, problem emerges when an enterprise user comes to us and asking for a user who can create product but not adding members to it, or a user who can push images to a product but not deleting any of them. Uh, it became an issue because we don't have such roles. The permission of the roles are hard-coded now. So we are considering to decouple the roles and permissions. Um, a role um, will be mapped to a set of permissions and uh, the admin can create custom roles to satisfy a wider range of uh, requirements. Additionally, such decoupling will make it easier for Harbor to integrate with third-party IAM services and provide a more consistent model with other components in a larger uh, platform. Uh, another Another requirement we hear from the administrator is quota. Uh, when the admins create product for their teams, they want to control the usage. They want to apply some policies such that when the usage exceeds the limitation in the policy, the action should be blocked. This is a pretty uh, reasonable requirement, I must say. Uh, we have introduced a mechanism to conditionally block users' requests when introducing the policy to prevent pulling vulnerable images. However, uh, tracking the usage can be tricky, especially um, the mo most interesting usage data to admin will be the usage of storage. Uh, and the container images, uh, as most of you already know, are layered, and we cannot simply add the size, size of the images to get the real usage. Uh, it, it will be very inaccurate. And it became trickier when you consider the layers are shared across uh, different teams or tenants. And so far, um, how, to, how do we calculate the, the storage uh, used by a tenant? We don't, still don't have a good answer to that. Additionally, to track different usage data, we'll potentially need, to, uh, need the help from external metering system so that another integration point we need to decouple um, uh, when implementing it. So that's the quota. Um, this is what we've been thinking about it in terms of multi-tenant support. Um, we found that whatever models we choose, it will be quite subjective, and any change we introduce will require user data migration. So uh, we need to be careful here. and. Uh, Again, your opinion will be appreciated to let us know uh, which direction is better for you. Um, so, last but not least, the Helm chart repo. Um, a couple of months ago, we introduced it to Harbor. So with this move, we hope to extend Harbor's capability to better serve the uh, Kubernetes users and embrace the cloud native world. <laughs> In other words, we want to transform Harbor from an image repository for a registry for, for uh, Kubernetes. So currently, uh, uh, by integrating with Char Museum, user can push pull Helm charts to a project and access the charts according to the same set of our back rule, uh, our back rule uh, as we done for the uh, images. So quite naturally, given what we implemented, the, uh, the advanced features to the images, such as uh, replication, content trust, vulnerability scan, we want to bring them to Helm charts. And actually, we have made some progress. We've supported uploading and managing the provenance file of a chart. So that covers part of the signature. And we have done some groundwork for chart replication. But there is a big gap for a very good end-to-end -end story, uh, which is the relationship between a chart and the images. Uh, currently, the chart only references the images in the YAML template files. In most cases, um, they are defined in the values.yaml. 
but theoretically it can be quite dynamic, dynamic or even random because it's uh, rendered based on the Go, tem uh, Go template language. Um, so from a content management perspective, we cannot have the complete knowledge of a package if the, pa if the dependency is unknown. For example, without knowing the vulnerabilities of all the Im images of a chart, uh, we cannot provide reliable information of vulnerability to the Helm user who is to deploy the chart to a, a very important cluster. So for Harbor, um, potentially, some of the solutions we can think uh, of so far. Um, the first one, um, do the best, best effort to co correlate the chart and the images. Uh, we can render the template of a chart, I mean, doing the tiller's job with the default values um, to provide an incomplete aggregated view of a chart because uh, a chart may reference images from different sources. Um, and um, do the best effort to provide the information of both of them to the user. And uh, the second one, um, when the pool-based replication is done, we may pull the images required um, by a chart to Harbor and generate a new chart, such that all the images referenced by the chart are also in Harbor. So we can provide a, a better aggregated view of a chart. And when uh, replicating a chart, for example, we can replicate all the images to the remote instance, including the chart, and handling it, in it as an all-in-one package. So uh, we have some brief introduction, uh, I mean discussion uh, internally, but we found either of these options will bring new issues. So again, if you have thoughts about this problem, please also share with us so uh, we can provide better support for this area. So um, I think that's pretty much everything we want to discuss today. And uh, shall I do this? Okay. Uh, thank you, Daniel. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, good sharing. Uh, thanks, Daniel, and you guys. Uh, excited. Maybe you have a question in mind. Uh, how should I do if I want to uh, involve in Harbor community? Right. We have many ways. Uh, first, uh, we welcome to join our bi-weekly meeting. Yeah, uh, you can find the meeting schedule in the go slash uh, uh, go harbor slash community repo. And uh, if the time is not suitable for you, you can check, you know, uh, email groups. You can su subscribe to the email group or send the email to the uh, email groups. And also, we have Slack channels, Harbor and Harbor D, uh, Dev. Uh, you need to access the uh, CSF Slack to get uh, uh, invitation and invitation, and uh, also encourage you to follow us in Twitter. Our uh, account is Project Harbor. Okay, and uh, thank you. I think uh, it's time to you know to have discussion about the exploration point. So, any question? So far, it's done by integrating with Notary. So essentially, when you push an image, you set the uh, Docker Content Trust service and pointing it to Harbor. You know, there's a Notary running within Harbor with the same set of rules, um, the RBAC rules, and uh, uh, it can uh, parse the token signed by Harbor the same way the registry does, and uh, uh, you can. Uh, push the signature, so the code is in the Docker client. Docker client will push the signature to Notary, and Harbor can communicate with Notary when you're pulling the image to verify the signature. So even when you, uh, when the consumer of the Docker image disable that, you can still block, you know, the untrusted image by uh, policy. Uh, we have audit logs. Uh, just uh, audit logs. I think no detailed metrics for the pushing and pulling. Yeah. Is there a question on the the scanning? Are you considering a more granular control instead of just IPD in the flow to get a little bit more flexibility in the... Like skipping like the whitelist of some famous CVE? Vulnerability, so. Yeah, so for like 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So far, um, we only have a high level vulnerability such as high, middle, low. But yeah, I think it's uh, worth we explore introducing the CVS score or even some whitelist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you please open an issue, or I think there's a, already an issue added, so you just yeah, add I one. Think we, yeah, we could get the same requirement from other uh, yeah, yeah, users. Yeah, I, I saw that issue. Yeah, yeah please go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we, don't. we don't. We, we have have that in our list, but yeah, yeah. If you are interested, you can try to write a proposal, and we can explore together. But but now uh, the 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 way to deploy Harbor to Kubernetes is via Helm chart. Yeah. But yeah, operator worth uh, really worth exploring because we find the the upgrade or migration experience via Helm chart is quite limited so far. Yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, so uh, let's see what we can do with Helm V3, maybe, mm -hmm. with some hook. How is the image cleanup works? Because we, for example, we generate a lot of, so like, same image will be generated like 50 times a day. So, how uh, does. Uh, you mean the. Uh, too many image tags? Uh, we have a online GC feature in next uh, new release, and uh, we also uh, go to the, the tag retention policy function uh, from the community uh, contributor, but uh, it's undergoing. I think it's not ready. Yeah, he made it too complicated, so maybe some time to implement. Maybe Nissan. <laughs> I'm actually, yeah. Yeah, Nissan. Right so I contributed the proposal for the tag retention policy. Um, we've, we've been using Harbor for about a year now, um, and have software out in Ohio. Um, and we wrote something outside of Harbor to deal with the image retention policy thing because we also generate a lot of images in CI. So there is something you can use today, it's just not built into Harbor. Um, and that's all mentioned on the issue, on the proposal right. for that. Um, I'm currently working on writing up some tracking issues and meta issues because I, I only have the time to work on this in my free time. Um, but it is something we're working on. Yeah, thank you, Nathan. Nice to meet you. Nice to drop. <laughs> yeah, <nice to> meet. <laughs> okay, any other question? I actually have one. Uh -huh. I just caught the end of the talk, so I apologize if this was uh, discussed before. Is there a straightforward uh, migration path to move from a traditional Docker Compose deployment to a Helm deployment? Or is the migration essentially spin up a new registry and use replication to copy all the images over? Yeah, I don't think we plan to support it yet. So we consider Docker Compose for users to easily bring it up and play with it. And for serious usage, you can use Kubernetes and leverage. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, write up an issue and uh, you may consider. Okay, so go, go ahead. We use Harbor too, but another team manages it and they're not, um, they have a lot more teams who rely on it. Is there a way to activate some of these features so we can try them? Or are there going to be separate builds? Like if we have a dev build to try some of these features out or a stable build? Oh, we don't have future feature gate now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I think uh, welcome to yeah, yeah, submit or, an issue to our Git repo, yeah. Harbor. Or yeah, maybe we when we check into master, we use some environment variable. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think it's a reasonable and interesting scenario. So, please submit a uh, an issue to our uh, GitHub repo. Then we can take it, mm -hmm. take care of it. Okay. Uh, can you elaborate on the backend storage backends? How are we using? What kind of uh, backends are you using? And how? how is this, for example, as free can affect the performance of the. So, so do you really care about the performance of S3 or what storage we, back? We have a lot of uh, pooling from a, a registry and uh, storage backends. Yeah. Uh, so we have a lot of pooling from uh -huh. other external tools. So if there is other backends are anywhere responsible. For example, M-Chart, 
child to child museum use as S3 as a backend, but once we used S3 as a backend, it was an awful performance for pushing and I see. pulling uh, childs. So <laughs> this is why we got the yeah, but so far we, yeah, that's is delegated to the upstream projects, I think. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, maybe we can do more tests to pro provide uh, performance data and some guidance or suggestions. What were your suggestions? Yeah, yeah, I think that's a problem. But Stephen hates it. <laughs> okay. No questions anymore. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone.